Estes is producing some really neat kits since the change in ownership several years ago, and we're about to take a look at their latest offering, the Antar. Hi there, I'm James Duffy, and I'm going to be your guide as we take a quick look at this kit. We'll also discuss some of the history behind it and chart out a potential build plan for the model. The Antar is based on a non-flying model built in the early 1950s by G. Harry Stein, the father of current ESTES Vice President Bill Stein. Within the rocketry hobby, Harry is best known as the founder of the National Association of Rocketry and the person perhaps most responsible for bringing model rocketry to the masses. Harry had already established himself as a writer in the years prior to that though, and in his professional life, he worked as a range safety officer at the White Sands Proving Grounds in New Mexico. His writing was divided between articles and books on the science of the day, especially rocketry, as well as science fiction. His experience at White Sands, coupled with his work as a writer, put him in a unique position to comment on the potential of the day's science. As a result, he was often asked to speak to groups on a wide range of subjects. Today, we might call this outreach activity, but at the time, it was just simply Harry sharing his experience and enthusiasm about the future. To support his presentations, he would build and display wooden models he designed and built himself. These fictional spacecraft would often end up in his writing as well as in illustrations on book and magazine covers. One of these designs was the Antar, and the original model is still in the possession of Bill Stein. This model was built several years before Harry's involvement with model rocketry, but it lends itself to a reinterpretation as a flying model surprisingly well. There's more than a little bit of a Bomark vibe in the design, which isn't a surprise. The Bomark surface-to-air missile was in active development when Harry first sketched the Antar, and it's no stretch to speculate that he might have been inspired by the design of that vehicle. Let's take a quick look at the kit. Because it uses traditional model rocket design and materials, we're not going to go into great detail about the kit contents. Instead, we'll focus primarily on a potential build strategy for the model. The box is just stunning and the warm colors give it an aged, period correct 50s vibe. The side of the box features some simple drawings of the fictional prototype. You can call that scale data if you like. The back of the box features some of the history of the design that we've already discussed. The model is built around a BT-60 airframe tube and also features a blow molded nose cone that has roughly a 5 to 1 aspect ratio. The fins are laser cut balsa about an eighth of an inch thick or four millimeters. One thing I'd like to point out are the assembly jig parts on the balsa sheets. These four parts will build up into a simple assembly jig that you'll use as you build the model to align the wings to the airframe tube. There's also a separate alignment guide right here that you'll use when you attach the fins at the rear of the model. Stuff like this is fantastic, and I've seen similar jigs and guides in several of the recent ESDIS products. Let's hope that this trend continues and migrates to other manufacturers soon. The water slide decal sheet will do a good job of replicating the look of the original display model. There's nothing overly large here that will be tricky to apply. The distinctive aft end of the Antar is done with these laser cut vein parts that will integrate with the aft centering ring. It's all self aligning and should be easy to do. Let's talk about paint colors. On a recent trip to the Estes plant in Colorado, my good friend Steve Crystal had an opportunity to snap a photo of Harry's original Antar model next to a copy of the new kit. What struck me about this was the contrast between the fresh white paint used on the new model and the clearly aged appearance of the white paint on the original. I really want to feature that vintage aged look on my Antar build. It looks like a vintage Fender guitar. 
Fortunately, there's an easy way to do that. Tamiya makes a spray lacquer in a color called Racing White. We'll compare it here to the more traditional white in the Tamiya range, which they call Pure White. The contrast is really quite striking, and the deliberately aged tone will look great on the finished model. For the metallic mid-body section, Tamiya's Gloss Aluminum Lacquer will work well, and the aft nozzle section can be done with a dark metallic gunmetal lacquer. I'll probably dry brush the veins with some contrasting colors after that cures though, perhaps with a mix of silver, rust, and copper. The green stabilizer and wing areas will be masked and then airbrushed with Tamiya Deep Green Acrylic. If you've yet to fully embrace your inner airbrush and want to use a rattle can, Tamiya has a couple of good looking options, either TS9 British Green or TS91 Dark Green. You'll note that I recommend a lot of Tamiya products. That's because they always work well and have never let me down. Besides, with testers exiting the hobby market, we all need to find and share alternatives. Here's where I may make a significant change though. I really don't care for filling and sanding all of the large balsa bits here. Instead, I'll probably use the parts as patterns and cut new parts from slightly thinner 332nd inch or 3 millimeter balsa. I'll then skin those parts with 010 styrene sheet, this very flexible, easy to cut material. That will be attached using 3M high strength 90 spray contact adhesive. I have an additional video planned showing how to use this particular adhesive, so stay tuned for that. Finally, I would be remiss if I failed to mention Chris Michelson's model rocket building blog, where he is currently documenting a very comprehensive build of an Antar kit. Chris does many of the factory and catalog builds for Estes, and he is an exceptional craftsman. I learn something new just about every time I visit his blog. You can find it at modelrocketbuilding.blogspot.com. That brings us to the end of this quick look at the Antar kit. I have a sneaking suspicion that Estes is going to sell a boatload of these and that we'll see them on rocket ranges all over the place this summer. Thanks for watching.